Hey, it's Pastor Brian here with your Wednesday Bible study. I uh, want to talk for a little bit about missions. Most of the time when we are in December, we think about the birth of Christ, as we should. We think about Christmas and all that goes along with that. But today, I want to talk about missions, and really missions fits in great when we talk about when we're in the month of December. In fact, it's our Lottie Moon Christmas offering time. We celebrate that every year. And if you're not familiar with that, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is our opportunity to give 100% to our missionaries, our Southern Baptist missionaries, through the International Mission Board. So all that money that we collect, churches all over the country come together to support our missionaries, and this money goes 100% out to those in the field. Some of them are in countries we know about. Others are in countries that we don't know about. And so they're all over the world, and they rely on our support. So I, I hope that you would pray about giving to our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It's so very important. Normally, we do a big mission study uh, and, and talk about the different countries and things like that. This year, it's a little bit dip, more difficult to do that. We can't gather in person, but I still think we should talk about missions. We should be missions-minded. The reality is COVID has made it tough to be missions-minded. And it's really nobody's fault. It's just the way it is. When we think about COVID, we think about all the things that are in the middle of this pandemic, it's normal to be focused on self, right? We think about how we are so focused on our family and our needs and our jobs and school and quarantining, as we should. But that doesn't mean that even though we are self-focused during this time, that we also can't be outwardly focused. Just because of COVID, we can't we can't not be thinking about other people and about the gospel. And so I really think it's important. You know, people are searching right now. In the midst of hopelessness, they want hope. You know, Franklin Graham just had an article where in his organization, they've actually seen more people come to faith in Christ, more interest in the gospel. Isn't that amazing that in the middle of a pandemic, God is working in an amazing way. Think about it. Are there people around you right now that are hopeless, that are needing hope in the midst of all that's going on? I bet there are. And you know what? We are the people that bring hope. We bring the gospel. We bring the only kind of hope that's lasting and true, and it's found in Jesus Christ. And so I hope you'll go with me for a little bit and learn what it means to be on mission for the Lord. There was a statement that was made in a book that we went through some time ago, Life on Mission. It said, there's nothing more freeing than abandoning your own mission and joining the everyday mission of God. I love that statement because, you know, when we join up with what God is doing and we say, okay, God, where are you working? Where are you moving? How can I be a part of that? There, there is a freedom to that because we are investing in what God wants us to. It's not about us anymore. It's about glorifying and, and, and being there in the midst of what God is doing. And that's what life is all about. Have you ever thought about the purpose of life for a minute? Have you ever thought about all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve? God laid out the purpose. And really, it's not to be good people. It's not to uh, all the other things that we could think of that could be purposes for our life. It's really to bring glory and honor to the Lord. That's what our purpose should be. We see in Psalm uh, 46.10, God says, Be still and know that I am God, and I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Think about that. God is calling us to exalt him, to praise him. This is just one verse of many. We are called to glorify God. So when we enter into a personal relationship with the Lord, we are redeemed by the gospel. We begin that relationship with him. That brings glory and honor to God. And then we are called to live every day as a sacrifice, obeying and following and bring glory and honor to God. That is the plan for our lives. In fact, that was the original plan. God had Adam and Eve in the garden and he wanted a relationship with them. He walked with them. He talked with them. It was amazing until sin entered the world. And when sin entered, it ruined everything. It ruined everything. Sin has caused God to reject mankind. And now we are inclined to self-glorification. 
many of us just look out for ourselves to bring glory and honor and fame to ourselves. But the good news is that God is on a rescue mission. He sent his son Jesus to live on this earth, to live a sinless, perfect life, and then die a death he did not deserve, and then was raised from the from the dead so that we could know what true life is, so that we could have hope. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we are renewed and made new, and we join God in a new relationship with him. And on top of that, God wants us to join him in his mission. It's so very important that we understand God wants to use you. Every believer has been called to join God on this mission. No matter where you come from, no matter your background, no matter where you work, no matter your education, it doesn't matter. God wants to use you. We are called to be everyday missionaries. Think about that phrase for just a moment, everyday missionaries. You know, often when we think about a missionary, we think about somebody that is going far away to an exotic location. And those are missionaries, and they are our heroes. I love reading the stories about missionaries of Adoniram Judson and all those people that went around the world to tell the gospel to people that have never heard it before. We need to uh, we need to encourage and support and train more missionaries. But you know what? God has called us to be everyday missionaries. Wherever we're at, wherever we are, whether you're, it's your neighborhood, your office complex, a college campus, wherever God has planted you right now, he is calling you to be a missionary. Have you ever thought about that as a mission field, your job, your neighborhood, your family, your college campus, your school, wherever you're at, God is calling you to be an everyday missionary. It's so important to think about ourselves like that. Now, you may look at yourself and say, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? And ultimately, it's not about us. It's not about what we can do. Even those famous missionaries would tell you it's not about them. They didn't do it in their own power. It was how God worked through them. I love this verse in Ephesians 3.20. It says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. God has put a great power in us through the power of the gospel, through the Holy Spirit, that he can do more than we can even imagine, more than we can even fathom. God can use you to be an everyday missionary. And through that way, we bring glory to God. When we share the gospel, when we disciple people, when we encourage and build up the church, we are bringing glory and honor to God. Remember, it's all about bringing glory to God. In fact, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything in our lives, we need to look at it and come at it from the perspective of saying, am I, am I bringing glory to God? Is this something that God is using in my life to bring him honor. You know, oftentimes when we think about this, there are barriers that we face, especially when we think about being an everyday missionary. That can be overwhelming to people. And we may say, well, we come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, here's three excuses that we often come up with. And I think these don't need to be excuses in our lives anymore. The first one is, You might say, well, I'm not a professional, meaning that I'm not a minister. I'm not a missionary. I'm not someone who is equipped or trained or should be witnessing to other people. You know, I would say to that, if you read the Bible, there are so many stories of everyday people sharing the gospel, discipling, doing God's work. In fact, it's not the professionals that do the work of the Lord many times. It's the everyday people. Sure, you have Peter preaching at Pentecost and many people being saved. But you also have Philip talking to the Ethiopian eunuch. And you have many other stories and many other people that are sharing the gospel. You can do it. You don't have to be a professional. Everyday people make the difference. Think about it. A minister and a pastor actually has less influence in the world. 
we we get to see you on Sunday and we get to invest in your life and we try to go out into the world and participate and witness, but we're just one person. We're not in your, your workplace. We're not in your neighborhood. You are there and God has placed you there for a reason. So you need to think of yourself as a missionary right where you're at. <clears throat> Number two, you may say, well, you know, there are people that are too busy pondering. They're too busy studying or thinking. <clears throat> this is the person who does a lot of study but doesn't really live it out. And really, this shouldn't be an excuse at all. We can understand uh, and have a biblical foundation for ministry, but if, if we don't make it a part of our life, we're really not bringing glory and honor to God. God wants us to learn and to grow. But just like James says, it's word and deed. It's learning and growing and then living it out. It's the outworking of the gospel in our lives as we serve and love and tell. Those are the things we need to be about. But also on the flip side, well, there may be people that don't understand. They may have the excuse of, well, I don't know what to do. I don't have enough knowledge. <clears throat> they may be people that, that serve and do ministry. They may even have a lot of practical experience. But they say, you know, I don't know what it means to share the gospel. I don't know my Bible. I don't know how to pray. I can't pray in public. You know, all of these types of things. <clears throat> and what I would say to that is that's an easy barrier to overcome. All it is is submitting yourself to the Lord and growing in your knowledge and learning. I would challenge you. There's a great book. I already mentioned it. Life on Mission. Read that book. It tells how to be everyday missionaries and how we can learn the, the gospel and how to present the gospel. Really, it's not even a presentation. It's just the outworking of God working in our lives, sharing our testimony, sharing some scriptures with somebody and saying, Jesus loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. And as you progress through that, you learn and you help them to become a believer and to know the gospel. And they are discipled. They, they, that, that's, that's it. And so we can't fall into any of these excuses. We can't let these things <clears throat> overwhelm our lives. We need to understand that being on mission for the Lord is important, that we, we, we need to be everyday missionaries. And really, there's a scary reality out there. Now, I have some, some stats here, and they're, they're even a couple years old, but the North American church is in decline. There's, there's no other way to put it. Out of the 300, over 300 million people in America, evangelicals account for only 22 to 28 million of them. That's a staggering 93% that are non-evangelicals. Southern Baptists report 16 million members. But here's the shocking thing. Only 6 million attend weekly worship services any given Sunday. Now, remember, these statistics are, are, are older, and some say that a third of the church in recent months have left and may not return. That's scary and staggering. We must be on mission. We are not a Christian nation. Our churches are in decline. We must be doing the work of the Lord. We can't get depressed. These trends can be reversed. If everyone would commit to see God work, he can do amazing things. You know, we can never underestimate the work of God. I think back to Ezekiel's prophecy and how God took him to a valley full of dry bones. And as he commanded him, Ezekiel began to preach, begin to prophesy. And as he did, those dry bones came to life. Think about that. That prophecy is even coming true today. As we see People walking around, talking, living their lives. They are dead and dry spiritually. They are like those dry bones. But through the power of the gospel, God is calling them to new life. I've seen this transformational power in my life, in many people's lives over and over and over again. God is still doing this work today, even in the hardest of hearts. We can't give up. God is still working and fulfilling that prophecy. God can do amazing work through the power of the gospel. And he wants to use everyday people. You know, I love the stories of the Bible because if you really, you know, we look at the heroes of the faith. Just turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And you see a long list of Hebrews, Abraham and Moses and David and on and on and on. <clears throat> but if you really examine their lives, 
We think of them as heroes now, but they're everyday people. Just read the story of Gideon, how he was a, a, a scared, sitting in a, in a wine press, not, not wanting to face the Midianites. But God called him and called him a mighty warrior and did amazing work in his heart and his life to follow God and to do uh, just, just great work for the Lord. God wants to use everyday people. He's not calling you to be some biblical hero. He's calling you to step out in faith and join him on his mission. You know, I recently had read a book, well, some time ago I've read a book actually now, <clears throat> called Chasing God by Roger Wong. And this was a Chinese-born man that came over to America when he was little. And as he grew and, and began his life as you know into adulthood, he was driving through San Francisco one day in 1983, and he had he was going from one job, he was going home for a few minutes, going to his second job. He had a flat tire, and it was in one of the worst neighborhoods. There was drug deals and strip clubs and just all kinds of stuff all around that was just, just homeless people everywhere. <clears throat> and as he was going through this, this town, and he had this flat tire, he began to change it, and he noticed off to the side there was a young boy that was being picked on by a group of bigger boys. And he did nothing. He didn't try to stop it. He fixed his tire as quick as he could to get out of that neighborhood, fearing even for his own safety. But as he got home, God began to put a burden on his heart, and he could not get that little boy out of his mind. He could not get the situation of what was happening. And what he didn't realize at the time is that God was calling him to a great mission. God wanted to use him for something amazing. And so as he began to submit to God's will and finally through a, some different circumstances, God called him to step out on faith. He began just making some sandwiches and he walked around downtown San Francisco and handed out these sandwiches and offered to pray for people. And through that ministry, he started a Bible club for kids. And then eventually, over time, they were able to purchase a building. And then he added a feeding program and a homeless shelter. And other buildings were added. And eventually a school was added. Over the last 28 years, Roger has been faithful to follow the Lord and to risk everything to make a difference for the Lord. What did that take? What did that take? Well, it took this small boy getting beat up for Roger to have a sense that God was calling him to something amazing. Was it easy? You know, the whole book chronicles his struggles and his trials. But through it all, through all of the struggles, Roger saw it as an opportunity to trust God, to place his faith, and for God to work over and over and over and over again. And God gets the glory. God gets the glory. Roger made Jesus number one and found God doing amazing, miraculous things in, around him, and through him. It all started with that simple calling on Roger's heart. I have to ask, is Jesus calling you to step out and do something amazing? Now, we have this overarching mission that says, go and make disciples, go and preach the gospel. But in that overarching mission, there's, there's little things. Maybe it's, I want to reach my neighbor. I want to I want to start a Bible study with my coworkers. I need to reach out to my family. I need to invite uh, somebody from my son's ball team to church. I need to intentionally invest in this person or that person. I need to disciple them or 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 her, him or her. You know, it's really important that we understand God is calling all of us to join him in his big mission in little bitty missions along the way. So what is God calling you to do? What is God calling you to do? Do you believe God is calling you to be on mission for him? He can use everyday ordinary people and he wants to use you. So how do we apply this mission? I want you to look around this week. Look around their, your context, wherever it is. It, it may be small. It, 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 it may be an, op, it, you know, there may be a social distance component that you're not able to get out and see people like you were, but you can still connect with people online, through the phone. 
You can still maybe bake cookies and take them to your neighbor and, and write them an encouraging note or offer to pray for them. There's so many ways. We are not limited. You know, Pastor Brian, Pastor BVD, is taking the students through a series right now called You Can't Quarantine the Gospel. And I just love that title because it's so true. No matter what's going on, Christians throughout history have overcome persecution, pandemics, natural disasters, and the, the gospel has not stopped, not once. So we cannot be the people right now that say the gospel is going to stop with us. It's just not going to happen. We've got to say the God, the quarantine cannot stop. The, the gospel cannot be quarantined. It's got to go out. And we have more ways than ever to share the gospel. So how are you going to join God in his mission? Ask yourself, to whom God is calling me to reach this week? What, are, what do these next steps look like for me? I don't know where you're at. I don't know what God is doing in your life, but I know he's calling all of us to join him in his mission. Will you answer that call? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time where we can stop and reflect on what it means to be an everyday missionary. God, you are an amazing God who loves us, who cares for us. God, you have sent your son to die for us and raised and brought him back from the grave so that we may have true hope and life in the gospel. I pray we would not keep that truth to ourselves, but it would go out to all the world to share your truth with everyone. Jesus, we thank you and give you all the praise and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you Sunday. If you can be there in person, great. Be there socially distanced with your mask or if you want to join us online. We've got a lot of great Christmas activities and things coming up. Uh, make sure to check our website, okilbc.org, for all those announcements and upcoming events. Have a great day. See you later.